have the great opportunity today to represent the work of the Phi Work Group. My name is Ken Drotter. Uh, I chair this group. Um, so, I, as Joel uh, referenced before, um, it's a physical layer working group. And that's kind of a very interesting concept. Because what it means is that perhaps we can do one design for physical I.O. that could be reused independent of the protocol. Uh, it's actually a very interesting concept. Right here in gray delineates the connections that we have today with the, using the DeFi. Both the, the camera, which is taking sensor information, sending it back to the SOC or the application processor, and display, which is conveying information from the SOC out to the display. Two different applications, two different protocols, same physical layer. Now, uh, what we're doing uh, looking forward is saying, well, okay, can we take, uh, can we go a little bit more bandwidth? Can we take on a few more interfaces? So we started M5, which is, uh, and that, the places where we think M5 are going to be in the system are the red lines, which we have a Uniport, which is a Unipro, a Gigabit Trace. Um, you can see here, as Joelle had pointed out, the collaborations we're doing with, uh, with JEDEC, both for uh, future memory interfaces and also for the universal flash, um, as well as the higher bandwidth uh, <coughs> display and camera. Uh, in addition to that, um, LLI stands for low latency interface. What we want to do is use the M5 physical layer, reuse it yet again, to do a very low latency memory access bus. And also, between the, uh, between the baseband and the RFICs, we're using the DIGRF. So you can see the opportunities here uh, for anybody who's building one of these application processors uh, is great because you don't have to design over and over again the uh, different interfaces for different for different types of applications. You can use one design over and over again. So again, uh, harmonizing with the theme that Joel brought up earlier about uh, minimizing the engineering impacts of, of facilitating these, these things. So, yeah. so um, what we wanted to do with uh, the physical layer is um, a clean slate effort. Um, to specify um, something that breaks out of the normal limits of the standards that are currently established. And the reason for this is, is pretty clear. Um, it, a phone's a really tiny thing, it's, it, and it's getting smaller every day. Uh, and so what we want to do is take advantage of the fact that if we have a physical interconnect, we don't have to go over miles of cable to get to one end or another. So we can save an enormous amount of energy in how we transmit signals if we, uh, if we just say, let's limit the scope of this to, um, to just one or two inches. There's actually, you can go a little bit longer than that. But the idea being, you know, it doesn't have to go very far. So if it didn't have to go very far, couldn't we save a lot of energy? Um, I already talked about the minimized I.O. redesign. Um, also, radiation, uh, we don't, it, it, you have, maybe in one of these small things, as many as five different types of radio receivers. Um, so you don't want an interface that uh, generates a lot of noise. Um, again, um, you have a fixed resource in terms of the amount of power that's available on the phone. So what you want to do is uh, ensure that your interface does not gratuitously burn power. And they, that's different from other standards, and I'm not saying they're gratuitous about their burning of power or utilization of power. But what is different is, is that frequently they're built for a platform where conserving power is not the first priority. But when you have a battery and a limited resource, all of a sudden that becomes very important. Um, another interesting aspect of, uh, that, that we took on was to try and establish some determinism. Many of the specs are based on these uh, interesting analog circuits, which in the past have fairly non-deterministic behavior. The amount of time it takes a PLL to lock and stuff. 
So what we've done, or tried to do in this interface, is set some determinism. So you know exactly, do not before this period use this interface. Uh, and that ought to facilitate um, nice things like test. Also, another advantage is um, that it's repeater ready. That uh, we realize that um, going uh, maybe two or three inches, there'll be some special case in a, um, in a cell phone, perhaps across um, a flexible cable to a, like a clamshell, where you might want to do something um, you know, with more adventurous electri electrical capabilities. So we've already built into this protocol the ability to support a repeater and also an optical media converter, which actually will give you a range considerably longer than, than one or two inches. Um, in addition, a, a lot of different standards like to have or have ideas about what kind of clocks they should have. Now, the M5, for example, um, uh, D5 forwards a clock in its native form. M5 encodes the clock within the data stream itself through 8-bit, 10-bit encoding. But other standards we found have specific ideas about what kind of clocking they can do. The important message I want to get across here today is that um, we, we can support custom clocking capabilities. And then the other thing that's important, of course, is to uh, make whatever signaling technology we have compatible with uh, low voltage um, uh, CMOS advanced processes. Advanced CMOS processes. That is an R. Let me see. Now here's an overview of uh, the differences between D5 and M5. I think the most important ones to uh, take away from this are that um, where D5 stops in terms of performance, uh, about one gigabit per second, is where M5 takes over and goes up to as much as six gigabits per second. So we have a scalable interface. Um, most of the um, most of the secrets around how is it capable? How is it possible to take one type of interface and then extend its extend its range like that? It has to do with the 8-bit, 10-bit encoding, which limits the bandwidth on the link. Um, and then we have uh, what's different between them uh, in terms of the amount of pins required, uh, the kind of communication. Uh, D5 goes one way or it goes the other way. M5 can go both directions at the same time. Um, are illustrated in red. One of the important things about the layering concept, uh, and this is again very exciting to me, is that um, uh, you can allow the physical layer, for instance, in other standards, you may be constrained such that the, your, your release schedule has to include the protocol, the link layer, and the physical layer. Now what's great about the way MIP is set up is that you can, um, you can let the phi level or the phi layer develop at its own rate. And so instead of sending out a spec every three years, you can send out a spec every six months. And as, as you can see, what, what this hopes to portray to you is, is that um, through the, uh, from the investigation group when it was charted in 2004, what we're gradually doing is actually um, increasing the rate at which um, our new specs come out. Um, the development cycle is getting shorter and shorter because, again, um, because it's a layer, we can develop at our own natural rate. We don't have to wait for the other layers to, uh, to, to harmonize. Now, um, here's uh, sort of a, was a form foil that we were given to acknowledge the people that are in the um, group there, there wasn't enough room on the foil to acknowledge everybody. <laughs> and so I did want to include um, Herod, who did the A&O chapter, um, Rada, who, who did the protocol chapter, and Henrik, who also worked with uh, Cedric on the electrical chapter. Um, without these guys, um, we would be nowhere. I mean, we, it's been a lot of hard work. Um, as you can see, uh, we have four hours of, of Telcos Weekly. Uh, my, my philosophy is, you know, the meetings will continue until the morale improves. Um, we also have a one-week face-to-face quarterly. And you can see we have a broad, uh, a, a, almost, I actually didn't count, but we have a, quite a few companies that contribute, um, come to each of these meetings on a regular basis. Well, that's it. Um, thank you very much for your attention.